Hi, I'm Will Diaz and welcome to The Real Deal, a show devoted to filmmaking. We'll talk to the people behind the scenes and in front of the camera who come together bringing their visions to life. Alex Heatherly up next on The Real Deal. In the studio today, we have Alex Heatherly. He's an actor from Corpus Christi, Texas, who has appeared in over 15 short and feature films. He can be seen in the feature film Deviant Behavior, directed by Jacob Grimm. Welcome to The Real Deal. Uh, thank you for, for coming on today. Thank you. Um, I mean, Alex, you volunteered in the Peace Corps. Uh, you taught farming techniques. Uh, you lived in the Congo. Mm -hmm. um, you've, uh, you've taught English in Japan. Uh, Four years you lived in Japan. Speak, speak to me about how you, with all that, got into acting. Well, it's not very complex. My my ex was Japanese, and she took the kids on vacation one summer. And I didn't have anything to do, and I saw in the newspaper the CC Seven Day was having open tryouts, and I figured, what the heck? I'll go down there and I'll try out and see what happens. And I got into a couple of films the first year, and then others saw those films, and they just kind of continue to grow from there. It was basically out of boredom. Right. I just wanted to see if I could do it. So, so these two films have led to, uh, I mean, 15. All the other ones, yes. 15. Uh -huh. um, did, you, did you ever think you'd be, uh, uh, be in front of the camera, wanting to be in the camera? No, actually, I, I didn't want to see any of it. And I went to see, uh, it was called Sag Culture by uh, Roman Gonzalez. And I was surprised. I was like, wow, the editors really made me look like I knew what I was doing. And it was my first time ever to try to act, but then I started to learn how the director, the editor, the lighting, everything else plays a major role in making the character the character. It's not just you, it's a team effort. Mm -hmm. And I was very, I was surprised. So you say, do, you, do you participate in, in creating a script, uh, the script process, building the character, or you just kind of wait for the script to, to come to you? Um, I kind of cheat a little bit. So I let all the work done, you know, the screenwriter or the director, or what they do 90% of the work. And then once I get the character and talk to the director, then I may make some minor changes or corrections <laughs> to the characters we go through. Sometimes it works, sometimes they yell at me and say, you're not supposed to do that, do this. So I'll just go back to the script. What, 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 what kind of corrections uh, are you making to the well, character? Well, it's not, it may be a good joke or a pun or maybe the line. It just doesn't sound natural. So you say it naturally and they go, oh, that sounds better. Yeah, let's stick with that line. Rather than arguing with them and saying, I don't think this line works. I make a mistake while I deliver it. And then afterwards they'll say, oh, yeah, that was better. Let's keep that take. And then I've edited this, the script without a fight. How much of, uh, of, your, of your personality of you is in the character? Do, is it half and half? Is it just a little? <laughs> um, I don't know. Most of the directors that I've been working with tend to cast me maybe as a bad guy or a tough guy or something like that. And my own real personality really isn't all that aggressive or mean, but I just tend to have a certain look they're looking for. And so, you know, I've been angry before so I can tap into that and, and play a character that way. But uh, I'm generally speaking a very easygoing professor here at Del Mar. Yeah, I mean, looking at looking at your, uh, your bio, I mean, you, you've, You've uh, been overseas working with people. You're, you're, you're very, uh, I, would, I would imagine, an, an extrovert uh, dealing with people. Yeah. Um, you know, preparing yourself for a role, do you, do, you, do you sit down, look at the script, think about what type of character you want this to be? Because, I mean, you're right, a lot of the ones you play are, are bad guys. Yeah, well, you know, it just depends on what the director wants. That's the starting point for me. And when I first got into acting, I had an old student who was at NY Film School, and I called him and I said, what do I do? He said, do what the director wants you to do. And so I said, okay, because I didn't go in with any preconceived notions. And so I always asked the director, well, what do you want me to do? And then from that point, we start you know, doing things. And a lot of times the directors say, have you seen this character from 
this movie or that movie. So I'll go watch that movie and say, I want you to be like this character or that character. And that's usually the study that I would do. Right. Well, we're going to take a look at one of the films uh, that you're in, uh, Two Ply from director Ruben Almeida Jr. featuring actor Alex Heatherly on The Real Deal. I got it. Hey, kid. Hey. You ready to get some groceries? Yeah. Great. See you soon. Okay, we've been contacted by our client to decorate the offices of their largest competitors. White Clouds hacked the databases and scored the layout of the target. AngelSoft's going to make her wait inside through the air ducts and kill the security systems. That leaves Scott, Braun, and myself taking care of interior decorating. toilet paper. Hey, do you want to talk about how much fiber I have in my diet, or do you just want to ring me up? Scott and I will hit the east side. Braun, you'll be covering the western half. Wait, wait, wait. I get a whole half to myself? Why don't we put my plan into action? Your plan? <laughs> what plan? Look, if we roll with this plan, we can cover far more surface area and... Enough of that. That's not what we're about. We're not going to flush our reputation on some harebrained scheme. This, this is what we're about. Process, technique. We don't cut corners. You two need to get your shit together. Stick with the plan. Have the paper in the truck at the drop-off point by six tonight. And Charmin, yeah. Isn't she too young for all this? I mean, <laughs> really think she can handle it? Don't worry about it, kid. Of course she can. Don't let her name fool you. She's as rough as sandpaper. All right, everybody get a good night's sleep. We got a big day tomorrow. Hey kid, I'm gonna need a ride. Oh, okay, okay. What the hell is this? It uh, helps me get through red lights. Good thinking kid, that's what I like about you. You're so freaking smart. Let's go. Son of a bitch! What's it all mean? Braun's going through with it. His bomb. The big idea Braun's always talking about. Bomb? Yeah, imagine a bomb so packed with TP and fluids it will make a mess of an entire floor. Especially when it dries up. Imagine scraping up tons of paper mache. Jesus. This used to be a beautiful plan, but now it's evil. No, we have to do something. We, we can't let them get away with this. How? They're all the way downtown. We can't make it in time. I guess we can. Really 
should stop with the struggling act! I mean, without your help, we never would have made it this far. <laughs> Just imagine the ultimate mess. One that can never, never be cleaned up. <laughs> Sounds more like mayhem to me. Mayhem was never in the plans. We were hired to send a message not to wreck the place. Well, what better way to send a message than through mayhem? Wet paper everywhere. Hard and teepee in every nook and cranny. Bron, you don't want to do that. It'll take weeks to clean up. And you don't want that on your conscience. And we're talking felonies for all of us. <laughs> we don't want that. Charmin, you've gone soft used to have such vision! Give it up, Sherman! You've lost! It's all... Save kid. He always did rob me the wrong way. We start to dispose of the bomb. Well, that made things easy. Come on, let's go. No, you two go. What? What I are have you to talking stay. about? Look, I'm a cop. No, <laughs> no, no, Look, I'm, no, no. I'm no, sorry, no. Charmin. No. But I'm letting you go. You two are not the bad ones, them. They're the bad guys. Look, you two have to go. There's gonna be cops swarming here any minute. Charlie. My name's Charlie. What's your name, son? Scott. No, what's your real name? No, really it's Scott. Huh, still playing it close to the chest, huh? <laughs> Take care, kid. Come on, Angel let's go. I can't believe I didn't see that coming. It just all went down the toilet. That was Two Ply featuring actor Alex Heatherly. Um, you, you mentioned earlier that you got your start uh, with two roles in a, in a, um, a seven-day uh, film race. Mm -hmm. um, and you've done features. So c can you uh, compare um, the planning, the preparation uh, between the two? Can you, can you compare and contrast them two for me? Well, in my experience, there are two kinds of sets. One where off the set you're having a lot of fun, everybody's joking around and having a good time, and then you film. And then there's other ones where it's no fun off the set, and the director is a dictator, and then you film. And the ones where the directors are mean and you don't have as much fun off set, those turn out really good. And then the ones where you get to goof off in the background and people aren't taking th things seriously, they tend to be maybe not as quality. And so even in CC70 in one week, some directors are very strict and they get things done and their, their product's wonderful because they're organized. Others, maybe you know, it takes a little time to get things together or inexperience and it doesn't always turn out as well. Right. Uh, t uh, tell us about a project that you're working on now. It's called um, Mike Love, Not War. You're, you're uh, uh, acting in this film? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about it? It's a short that's being put together by some Del Mar and A&M students here for the um, 
and they want to show it around in some different contests or um, it, it, they're going on the fi uh, circuit. Yeah, the film circuit. So, film circuit. Um, screen. And it's um, it's a story about some kids who make a discovery, and I get to play kind of a bad guy again, who you know has to corral these kids and retrieve something that they shouldn't have, and so you know it's kind of half action, half comedy, half 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 tragedy. Or I guess the three halves, but either way. Um, and it's like some of the other feature links here, all the talents uh, volunteer, and that's one of the big difficulties you were asking about feature links that I've done, because most of the work we do is on weekends and people are contributing their own time. It takes, it takes longer to get everybody scheduled together, but it looks like it's going to be a pretty good uh, production. So you're, you're playing you're playing a bad guy again. Kind of, yeah. So are you falling into a typecast? Is that, is that going to be an issue now? Uh, well. I don't mind the issue if I get to do more roles, you know, and sometimes I wish, well, come on, you know, write a different character for me or let me do something else, but um, I enjoy film work. I enjoy being with the people that have creative ideas and they have visions and they can see things and do things that, you know, I'm not a director or cinematographer and I look at it and later I go, wow, that is so genius. And so that creativity and that kind of culture is so much fun to be part of. That I'm willing to play just about any role if I can be a part of it. What is, what is the character you want to play? Is there, some, is there a character in your mind like, that, that's the one I want to play? Well, it's already been done. Really? And the perfect guy, and I, I would have been better, but the guy, I forget his name, he's from Walking Dead, but he did The Punisher. Okay, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, okay. Exactly so about. The Punisher is who I would have been, but <laughs> it's already been done and he did a perfect job. So so, so, the, so the bad guy's like, like your alter ego. But he's a good guy, bad guy. See, and that's yeah. the way I kind of like see okay. things. Like yeah. an anti-hero. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. Not really hero, not really villain, but somewhere in the middle. Right. Um, real quick, uh, being that you start, you got into um, making films, acting in films yeah. um, later in life, is mm -hmm. there advice you could give to people in their late 30s, early 40s, or, or 50s who, who never did it but mm -hmm. want to do it? What's the advice there? Oh, yeah, a lot of my students at Del Mar, and they're younger, but even older people, I say, hey, CC7 Day is a great place to start. There's usually 50 teams. Everybody's running around doing all these creative things. I said, just write a script, do makeup. Uh, whatever talent you have, a director's looking for you. And there's a certain look, and you don't have to think of yourself as, Oh, I'm movie work. No, the director will look and go, hey, I need you for this role. Or I need you for that role. And they'll help direct you and get it. And so I've actually helped a lot of my students and some friends get involved, write scripts and act, do music um, in CC7 Day just to get the ball rolling so that they can be part of this fun, creative adventure. Right, just get involved. Yeah. And, yeah, and just do key. it, right? Yeah. Excellent. Nothing to be worried about. Excellent. Well, I appreciate you coming in, Alex, and sharing a little bit of advice, a little bit about your background, and, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Uh, let us know when uh, when your next uh, acting spot in Mike Love Not War comes out. Okay. Be interested. And uh, from time to time, The Real Deal will spotlight filmmakers in their film. Uh, next on The Real Deal, the award-winning film Viewfinder from Christopher Cisneros. era un hombre malo. Él era un músico, un hombre bueno. Yo lo sé, porque yo todas las veces estaba ahí, mirando.
Para mi amigo Eloy, la vida era como una vista. Sus ojos eran como lentes que miraban todo. En esa manera, nosotros éramos buenos amigos. Porque eso es lo que yo hago también. Yo miro. Y yo lo miré cambiar de un hombre bueno a un matón. Yo pesqué todo el fotograma. Las vistas eran su pasión. Matar nomás otra parte de su vista. Las vistas en palabras, en música, eran sus favoritas. La acción de las fantasmas es lo que le gustaba mejor. Todos los días, horas a horas, él miraba sus vistas. Yo miraba a Eloy. Él me decía de las historias curiosas y las artistas curiosos. Yo ponía atención como un buen amigo. Él me dio el nombre Hal. A mí me gusta ese nombre. A mí me gusta Eloy. No más no me gusta lo que él hace. No me gusta a lo que se ha convencido. Sus manos están manchadas con sangre. Yo sé que él no es. Adentro de mi amigo hay unos demonios. Ellos son los que controlan a sus manos. puede luchar y yo no lo puedo ayudar.
el músico ya no está. No más queda el matón. Mi amigo, no. Yo te voy a guardar los secretos. Somos amigos, compañeros. Y nada va a cambiar eso. That was the award-winning film Viewfinder from director Christopher Cisneros. I want to thank Alex Heatherly for being here today and Christopher Cisneros for sharing their work with us. And I want to thank you for supporting independent filmmaking. And I invite you back for another edition of The Real Deal. I'm Will Diaz, and that's a wrap.